Hey, welcome to another episode of Refactor. This is Arnav from Scalem. And today we will talk about different types of interviews that tech companies take and how you can prepare for them. To get started with, let's try to understand what kind of skills are tech companies looking to judge via their interviews. So you can broadly divide that into actually three types of skills. One, they want to know about your problem solving skills, which is, are you good with data structures? Do you know your data structures and algorithms? Can you solve a basic problem solving kind of a question or not? That's one type of thing that companies want to judge for. Second, system design. Now, system design gets more and more important with seniority. So usually very little focus on this at a fresh graduate role, but more and more, if you go six years, 10 years experience, this is more important. But system design further div divided into low level and high level design is about how you design the code base of your projects and how do you design different parts of your software to talk to each other. Right. And finally, the third set of skills that companies are interested in is your ability to build projects, your software development uh, and project building ability. Okay. So we'll take each of these one by one, break it down into which kind of companies focus on which of these skills and what are the interview formats like. So we will start off with data structures and algorithms. Now, this is sort of like the bread and butter of the interviewing process of all large companies. And why? Let's try to understand. Now, in most large companies, there are a lot of internal teams which are working on a lot of different types of technologies. So they do want to make sure that as a generic software developer, how good your skills are. Can you be thrown any random problem and you'd be able to solve that or not? That's a very important thing for them. They don't want to know whether you are a good React developer or a good Node.js developer or a good Android developer. That's not what they are primarily trying to look at. They're looking at... Are you a good generic software developer who can be thrown any problem statement and you can come up with a solution with? The second problem also for the hiring process of larger companies is the necessity for removal of bias. They want their interview process to be as objective as possible so that the result of whether somebody is selected or not selected does not depend on who was taking the interview and what the question was. So that somebody cannot come and say that, hey, this other person was able to get into the company because they were asked easier questions or because the interviewer liked them more than they liked me, right? So that's where data success algorithms questions are a much more standardized format. And usually this gets asked in two ways. One, usually in your first round, you might be given an online coding round, which is on a platform like Hacker Rank, Hacker Earth, Interview Bit, these kind of platforms. You would be given a set time limit, one hour or two hours, and then you would be asked to solve two to five data structures algorithms related questions. They would be more in a puzzle kind of a format. They might have a elaborate problem statement or they might be very directly asking that, okay, here's a binary tree and you have to flatten it so that every node comes after the last node of the previous element and all of these things. So, you know, either it will be very straightforward manipulating a data structure or they might be given a certain uh, sort of puzzle kind of question around it, but it has to be solved using a data structure or an algorithm. And for these kind of rounds, obviously, going and practicing a lot of these questions from sites like Interviewbit, LeetCode, these kind of places is, of course, helpful. Okay. Then uh, the second way the same skill gets judged is usually an interview, which is called whiteboarding used to be the name when uh, this used to happen on site, which is uh, somebody's called to the office. You say that, okay, this is an algorithm. Can you write it on the board kind of a thing? But nowadays this happens over something called a phone screen. A phone screen means you're generally connecting over Zoom or uh, Google Meets or a platform like that. And you have to write code in a Google Doc. So usually uh, what people are checking is that not whether you put your semicolons in the correct place or not and your syntactical, you know, grammatical level checks, but they are seeing that without an ID uh, giving you autocomplete sort of help, can you write down an algorithm basically on a blank sheet of paper or not, right? Again, you know, practicing a lot of uh, difficult data structure algorithm questions are important for this. And some companies are known to ask really tricky and difficult questions like Google and Facebook, especially they are known so that their hiring bar is higher. So their data structure algorithm questions are a little more difficult, but this is sort of, I would say 70 to 80% of all tech interviews definitely involve at least one or the other format of testing your data structures and algorithm skills. So next let's talk about system design and in system design. Also there is low level design as well as high level design. 
and with low level design people are checking your ability to structure the code base itself so a single project like if you're creating an api creating an app how would your data structures inside your project uh, communicate with each other how would you manage the state how would you uh, manage connections to your database all of these things and how to design the schema like the data that you're storing what objects would be related to what other objects right and high level design is more about let's say you have to build an entire e-commerce system or you have to make a streaming service so what different services in the back end do you need you need a payment service you need a uploading and a downloading service maybe you need a service which takes care of signing up users and providing authentication tokens for the user what would the api be designed like and maybe between two services there is a difference of speed so you might want to add a queue between them so that the slower service can pick up things one by one so the importance of these depends on your seniority. So if you are going for an SD2 sort of a role, uh, if you are two to six years kind of experienced, the low level design interviews are definitely going to be coming. That's sort of very important and a staple part of the interview process. And as you get even more senior, like from five years and plus kind of seniority level where uh, your responsibilities at that company is going to involve designing the architecture of the system, there the high level design questions will also come. Let's take a look at what's the format of these interviews, right? So with a low level design interview, there are two ways it can happen. One is that it's called a machine coding round where generally you are given a two hour to four hour window. Somebody might be connected with you on the other end or might not be connected and you might screen might be recorded or something. And you're asked to actually build a subsystem of a project. Like let's say for a ticketing system, we have to build like once the payment is starting to be done, we have to block the seats. And once the payment is done successfully, the seats have to be allocated. If they are not successfully done, the seats have to be freed up. Design this system. You don't have to create an actual app or a website. You don't have to even create maybe a API for this. You just have to create the functions which can make this work. So if you are a backend engineer, by the way, then you would understand that this actually checks for the service layer of your code, your domain logic, your business logic of your code that's getting tested. You get a few hours to build it. Uh, in those few hours, if possible, if you can write maybe one or two tests, which makes sure that all the use cases are covered, that's great. And post you have built it, the interviewer might be discussing a few corner cases, how you'd handle that, how you'd secure it. Maybe they would give you some extra constraints and how do you apply those constraints and, you know, change your project from there. Uh, apart from machine coding round, you might also be given a take home project for low level design. A take home project would be you would get 24 to 48 hours sort of time. You might be asked to create maybe a command line based project, let's say a command line based system which checks the score of the latest uh, cricket match that's happening. How do you check the scores? How do you cache it? At which frequency you would fetch that data and show it? Generally, even in a take home interview, you would not be asked to create an end to end website or an application in a low level design uh, take home interview. And that's why you would be given 24 to 48 hours sort of time. Uh, and people are going to be looking at how well your code is decoupled. Is it extendable? Can new uh, classes be added? Can new types of data be added? The relationships are scalable or not? You have indexed the things correctly and not. That's going to be checked for. Okay. And finally, there's another third sort of, I would say, low level design checking round that's starting to prop up a bit. It's called a debugging round where somebody has given you a system where there is a bug and some companies go so far as to, you know, asking you which languages and frameworks you are good at. And they will give you a project in that particular language or framework. And they will tell you that, okay, there is either a bug or they will say that, okay, this system has a bit of a problem. Sometimes you might have to figure out the bug. And sometimes they will say that, okay, here's a problem. The number of requests have increased a lot. And uh, now the system has become very slow. So here's the problem. I have just opened the code base in front of you. Can you modify the source code so that this problem gets solved or this bug gets fixed? That's a debugging round. That's uh, not so common, but it is getting a little bit common these days since remote hiring has been happening. Some companies have been doing this, right? Let's talk about next the high level design questions. Now, high level design interview questions are generally more theoretical in nature because you wouldn't within the scope of an interview or even within the time frame of a week or so, you wouldn't be able to actually build an entire project with microservices and deploy it or anything, right? So you would generally be asked that, hey, okay, we want to build a restaurant reviewing system, let's say. And how would you design it? What databases do you need? Do you need separate services for handling the review, for saving the cache of the reviews and summary of the reviews and all of these things? 
what the APIs you would make and how will the client fetch the data from the API and will the client be caching something. So you generally these interviews end up happening on a iPad or a draw.io sort of setup where you can draw some diagrams, tell a little bit about how your system uh, would be designed. You might be able to create an ER diagram for the database or a class diagram and these kind of things. That's how a high level design interview looks like. And the high level design interviews are not about getting it correct, but it's about how well can you describe your system in terms of writing a description of it and creating diagrams about it. How well can you communicate that to the interviewer? And if the interviewer adds some new constraints or some new challenges to you while you are interviewing, can you incorporate that into the design? That's what a high level design interview process is going to look like. And let's finally talk about one skill, which is also very important for smaller companies and upcoming startups, because they're, they're looking at you to sort of join and actually be productive on day one is your software development skills, your project building skills, right? So what happens is that if you take a look at very big companies like uh, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon kind of companies, the architectures they use, the frameworks they use and the way they deploy is very specific to their company. And so they assume that anybody who joins those companies, the projects that they will work on, they will have to anyway learn within the company. And they're not expecting that on day one, you write code to production. Once you join, they will train you in their tools. They will train you how to deploy on their systems. So they are not expecting a lot of project building skills. They don't want to judge you based on that. But what happens in a startup is that they're using generic tools. They're just deploying it to some place like AWS or Azure and they're using GitHub for code management. They're using some off the shelf frameworks simply like, you know, uh, React for front end or Node.js, Django or Spring Boot for back end. So for them, what is important is your productivity and they can't invest a lot on hiring somebody and then training them for six months on their frameworks and everything. So they are going to be looking for, hey, we have a back end which is made in Spring Boot. Can you build a project in Spring Boot and show us how well do you do that? Now, in terms of project building skills, what usually happens is that some companies might be interested in looking at your existing open source projects you have built. So if you have a few on your GitHub repository, that really helps a lot in these uh, companies, in your product startups. But if you don't, uh, that's also fine. Then what happens is usually you get a take home assignment uh, and you get more time for this. You would usually get a one week of time and you have been given specific requirements like this is an API. These are the endpoints we need. These are the data we need to fetch. Okay. The requirements would not cover corner cases, edge cases, possibilities of error. These are the things they are looking at how well you design them. So they will look at whether you write unit tests or not. Okay. They will look at whether you handle the common sorts of error that happen because of wrong user input or not. So for a mobile development role, you might have a take home assignment where you have to create a mobile app that analyzes the spends and the expenses uh, and then savings of a user from their SMSs. Let's say an example, maybe you're making a front end engineering role. You're going for somebody asks you to make a okay, COVID tracker, which was a dashboard of COVID cases and vaccinations in India in the last six months. And maybe for a back end role, you're going, somebody says that, okay, we have to create a blogging app with, you know, articles, comments, likes, favorites, all of these things. So design an API for this with the database and all on in place. You get fairly good amount of time a week or so. So you can spend, you know, 12, 15 hours over the week working on this project and post submitting the project you usually have a round where a senior engineer or the hiring manager from that company sits down and asks you to describe the project you have made. So of course you can't get somebody else to make that project because they will be asking you, how did you make the project? Where did you get stuck? And then they might ask you that, okay, if certain of the conditions which were required for building the project, they change, then how will you adapt your project to it? And they might even ask you to make some live changes to your project like after you submitted the project, they open the project, sit with you and you say that make some changes to this project according to these requirements and show me. So that's how project based interviews uh, usually go like, okay. So most tech jobs that you would be applying for, they would have an interview process which involves rounds, which will uh, be either these, uh, what we talked about or a combination of these. If you have faced any other sort of uh, interview rounds, definitely comment about that and write about that uh, in the comments below. Uh, if you want to know more in detail about any one particular type of interview rounds and how to prepare for them, you know, write to us for that as well. And otherwise, if you love this video and you want us to cover more about the interview processes in companies, please like, share and subscribe to the video. Thank you so much.